Hey y'all, it's Zach Pippen, and today we are talking RAW versus JPEG, what they are, and which one you should be using. If you don't already know, RAW and JPEG are just two different file formats that your camera can shoot. And the major differences are RAW is going to be taking in a lot more data and being a bigger file size, and JPEG is going to have less data in it and be a smaller file size. If you don't already know, RAW and JPEG are just two different photo file formats and your camera is probably capable of shooting either of them and sometimes both at the same time. A RAW file is going to contain all of the data that's hitting your sensor. It's going to be a very large file and you're going to have to edit it after you take it. You can't just take a RAW file and put it straight on Instagram. A JPEG on the other hand is basically auto-processed by your camera and it's going to shoot out a much smaller file and you will be able to edit it if you want to, but if you want to put it like straight on Instagram or Facebook, you can do that. To get a better look at the difference in these two files, we're gonna go out in the field. Now I'm gonna preface this shot with saying I was on the way down to the river and my car broke down, but I was only about half a mile away from where I was going, and so I thought, I've made it this far, I'm just gonna walk the rest of the way. So I left my car where it was on the side of the road, I grabbed all of my camera gear, I lugged it down, I was hot and sweaty and kind of out of breath. The sun was already down lower than where I wanted it to be, but I was still able to get a few shots that we're gonna be able to use for examples. Having said that, here we go, down to the river. So I'm on the banks of the Saluda River in Colombia, and I want to get a shot of this rock that's just upstream, and I want to show a lot of the movement of the water. I want to really smooth it out. So like we learned in our shutter speed tutorial, I'm going to have to open up my shutter for a while. And I've got my camera set right now at a five second long exposure. My aperture is at f25 and my ISO is at 100. I also have a polarizer on the front of my lens. We'll talk more about those later, but that's just going to help uh, get a little bit better of a shot. And I've also set my camera right now to take a raw image and a JPEG at the same time. So we'll be able to see the exact same image once we get back in to the computer to see what they look like side by side and what the difference is in being able to edit them. All right, so back on the computer, here is that photo that I referenced in the video. I'm gonna go ahead and go into reference mode so we can see side by side the raw and JPEG. I have the raw up top and the JPEG down below. And as you can see, totally unedited and not zoomed in. They both look pretty similar, but if we zoom in on the rock on each of them, we can see that they're both pretty blurry. We had some issues. I forgot to turn off the image stabilization on my camera, and I was also in some soggy ground, kind of standing in the water. It didn't turn out that great. So what I'm actually going to do is come over here to this other shot that I took and I'm gonna make that my reference photo. And so now we have the raw up top and the JPEG down below. So here again, you can see they're already pretty similar photos, but if we zoom in on the trees, we can see just a little bit of a difference in the JPEG. It's not got quite as good of detail. Um, if we zoom in on the rock here, we're gonna see the JPEG is not quite picking up as much as the shadows. This is not a big deal. If you're not gonna be doing any editing, uh, you can see there's not really that much of a difference. Like I said, raw photos have to be processed. JPEGs can go straight to wherever you're sending it, whether you're texting it to a friend or if you're posting it on Instagram. Now when we start editing is when you're really gonna see the difference. So I'm going to select both of these photos so you can see them at the same time. Now let's say I wanna bring up the shadows and I'm gonna do it just very dramatically and pull them both up 100%. So as you can see here, we've got the raw up top again, JPEG down below. We've already got a good bit of detail still showing through here in the raw. The JPEG is losing some. If we come into the trees, we're already starting to lose some uh, in the JPEG. It's just not looking quite as good. Now to speed things up a bit, I already did a good bit of editing before I started filming this. I'm gonna go ahead and just paste all of those edits that I copied earlier onto this photo. So as you can see here, we have a totally different photo. Uh, I played with the highlights and shadows, the colors, the tone curve, 
we'll cover all of those in other tutorials down the road. But I just want to show you the major differences here. If I take all of the exact same edits that I did to this raw file and I go over to the JPEG and I paste these edits on. So at first it's going to look really off. I'm going to go back here in reference mode because that difference is actually just because of the temperature. So if I pull down the temperature on the JPEG some, I can actually adjust it and I can get it about to the same. So they both look pretty similar to the naked eye, but if we go in here again to the trees, you can see the raw file has still kept most of the detail, whereas the JPEG, it almost looks like Monet made a painting of the raw file. Now if we zoom in here again to the rock, you can see in my raw file I've got all of the highlights all the way down to the shadows still preserved pretty well, whereas my JPEG, it looks like I'm looking at it through a dirty window or something. It's just really losing a lot of detail. Now again, back zoomed all the way out, they look pretty similar to the naked eye. Like I said in the beginning, I'm going to answer when do you want to shoot RAW versus when do you want to shoot JPEG. Now if you're a professional, obviously you're going to, going to shoot RAW. Then again, if you're a professional, you're probably not watching this tutorial. So you want to shoot RAW if your photo is going to be printed out in a really large format and put on a wall or something. Then you're going to really need all of that detail. If you think you're going to have to go back in afterwards and do some more major color correcting or do a, a lot of work with the highlights and shadows if you don't have a lot of dynamic range that you have to work with, then you want to shoot raw. On the other hand, if you're just a beginner, you want to focus on the basics first. Get your exposure triangle down, get your composition down. You really want to spend more time taking photos than editing photos when you're first starting out. Then once you've gotten those basics down, once you're really pushing the limits of how good of a photo you can get in JPEG, then you want to go over to RAW, where you're going to be able to tweak the final product and really get the most out of it. So that's all I have for today. I hope it was helpful. If it was, please give it a like. As always, feel free to hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. My username is Zach Pippen on both. Go ahead and tag me in your photos. I really want to see what you're doing with the skills you're learning in these tutorials, and I'm happy to give you any feedback that you'd like. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed already, please do that now. And if you hit the little bell icon, you will get a notification when the next tutorial comes out. I'll see y'all then.